Hey guys, let's check this tractor out, see if we can get it to start so we can find the gas leak. Okay guys, there's the carburetor, so apparently the, he said the gas was leaking out of the carburetor. I don't know if he, he meant it was flooding out. I don't know if something's loose. I don't know. I got the battery. I put. I had the battery charger on the charger all night last night, but uh, uh, it didn't take a charge. So I got it on uh, on my boat battery over there with it on the charger, and then I got the jumpers back here to this thing. So let's just see if it'll crank over. See what he was talking about the blades yeah they feel pretty shot so we'll have to check them out too that'll be another video um, we'll have to replace them probably charging I'm going to leave it run for a minute and we'll see if this uh, carburetor starts leaking but I don't see any leaks in it yet nowhere okay guys now I've noticed that this thing does not like to rev up if you rev it up it starts cutting out missing popping and let me show you something real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I think this may this thing may have a valve issue and I'll tell you why if you look down here on the valve cover see that that's that uh, black RTV sealer it's like a former gasket someone's had that off of there probably checking the valves or fiddle fucking with them trying to adjust them and if you don't get them right see it's an overhead valve so valve system so you gotta adjust them like a car. So I'm thinking that may be an issue right there with the way it's running. So, let's see. Uh, that's probably why it's popping and banging. So it's either got a burnt valve or one is out of adjustment. But let's check the transmission on it and make sure it's okay.
pulled it over here yesterday. These are automatics, they're hydrostatic transmission. You gotta pull this out if you ever if you ever want to push or pull one of these and then push it back in. Like that. Now it should go. If the transmission's good. but it is working. Pull that valve cover off and see what's going on. Man, I'll tell you what, too. It's running rich, man. That's burning my eyes. I still have yet to see a leak in the carburetor, so... I guess they maybe had a little dirt in it. But... We're going to let it cool down. I'm going to go in the house cool down for a few minutes, then we're going to pull this cover off and see what we got going on there. Okay, folks, this is what we got to get into next. We got to pull these bolts out around here. There's one on the bottom right there. Got to pull that PVC hose out of there. It's crankcase ventilation is what it is. Let's get that up there out of the way. We're going to lose some oil, so I'm going to put a rag down there. And uh, let's get this pulled off. Time to pull the exhaust. Woo! I can smell some stuff out of the exhaust pipe. Unburnt fuel or something. got this glued on there man why do they do this shit man that is glued on there just gonna bend the hell out of it trying to get it off of there all right let me look at that see what we're gonna do uh, Uh, let's take this off. Take this cover off and see what's going on underneath it. Now, a lot of guys 
You may be asking, why didn't you just check the plug first? Well, there's a reason I didn't check the plug first, and that's because whatever's, it may need a plug, but the noise that I'm hearing is some popping through the carburetor. When you hear that, that's not a spark plug. That's usually in a, in a valve valve situations usually what causes that so that's why I did not pull the spark plug first okay yeah they've got this so glued on there it's pitiful probably going to bend the hell out of it trying to get it off of there damn all right the oil looks clean and good. It could have a bent push rod too. These right here, these things right here are your push rods. One of those could be bent. Still a little hot, but man, things feel tight. Those seem to be way too tight. Alright, I'm going to check the specs on these. I'm going to go ahead and pull these. are called rocker arms. I'm going to pull the rocker arms off and the push rods out, and we're going to check the push rods and see if they're bent. Alright guys, this is the uh, push rod for the intake valve. Now how I'm going to check to see if it's bent is I'm going to put on a very flat surface. I've got it on the counter in the kitchen. And I'm going to roll it. And that one is perfectly straight. Now if it wasn't, you would see the end going up and down. See that's rolling perfectly straight. Now let's check the exhaust. There's one for the exhaust. So they're not bent. Also found out there's no adjustment on them valves. They have hydraulic lifters. So it sounds to me like a valve was staying open too long. So the only other thing that could cause that other than being too tight on the adjustment would be a burnt valve or a cracked valve. So we may have to tear into the head. So let's go get this put back together. Well, let's go put it put it in there and uh, I'm going to do some more checking on a couple other things alright now these just get pushed up in there's a hole down in here that they go into right there now we're going to take these Oops. as you can see they're very I loosened them up that's all I did And make sure that's in there. Make sure that's in there. Alright. Make sure it's on your lifter. And these, all they do is get tightened up. There is no valve clearance on these to speak of. So... I may be looking at a valve, a valve issue. See that right there, I don't know if someone has changed the valves or the valve, the push rods and put longer push rods in. I don't know, but that just opened that valve up. Okay, now. The first thing you got to do is you got to put it on top dead center compression before you do this, which I have already done. So I don't know what the story is on this, why they would be opening like that. I, I'm not sure. There's a couple different reasons, but like I said, someone could have could have put, could have changed these uh, push rods and put too long of push rods in it, 
but I'll have to get the specs and I'll have to measure the push rods to see if that is the issue. But I'm just showing you this how they go in here. They go like that. Now, it is on top dead center compression. But I want to show you something if I can get you down here on this, uh, like that bottom one there. Now, watch when I loosen that, that valve will actually come out, which means it's closing. So right now, it's open a little bit. All right. So. I could have some suck lifters, but it doesn't doesn't seem like it. See, that's opening. That's opening that valve. And it shouldn't do that. Let's see if it does it on the top one, too. Where's the top one? All right, there. All right. Let's see if that opens. See, they're opening. They shouldn't be open right now. So let me see if I can get some specs on them valve, on these push rods, and then we'll see, see if that's what someone has done. Okay, guys. It's 93, or 92 with a real feel of 103. Uh, so, like I said, some people will ask, why didn't I check spark plug first? Someone has already done that. That has not been in there that long. See? It's pretty much a new plug. Uh, somebody's tried to gap this plug, and you're not supposed to gap this one. So I have to straighten that out. So what I'm going to do is if I have a cracked valve, things expand when they get hot. So it ran good when it was cold, and then once I got it up to operating temperature is when it started acting up. So, there's a couple things here. If it's got a crack valve, remember things expand, that includes cracks. So if it's got a crack in the valve, then as it heats up, that valve can, or that crack can open up more, causing the sound we're getting through the carburetor. Also, it could just be as simple as a, as a piece of uh, carbon built up in there. If there's carbon underneath that valve, it's not going to let it close all the way. You'll get the same, the same uh, issue. So, I'm going to put this together, and I'm going to run it for a while and see if it gets any better. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to pull the head off of it and check the valves. They could be worn. If there's nothing wrong there, then we're going to check the cam lobe. Now we're getting deep into the engine. It could be a cam lobe. I really don't think it is, but because uh, the valves seem like they're opening a good way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to let it run a while, see if I can't get the carbon, if it's a piece of carbon, see if I can't get that to blow out of there. Um, and if, that, if it don't straighten out on its own after a couple hours of running, then then we'll uh, we'll take the head off and see if there's a valve issue in there so I did check on the uh, the uh, the push rods they're the right push rods in it so I don't know I'm not sure what's going on so we'll just have to check it but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh, with thinking you know it may be a piece of carbon I don't know, but let's run it for a while and see if that straightens it out. So, uh, then we're going to go from there. Uh, it's too hot to be working out here right now. I got too much junk in the way in the garage to get this in the garage. And it's not much cooler in the garage. So, I'm going to call it quits for today, but that's what we're going to do. And there will be a part two when we do some more stuff on it. So right now let's get it running good before we go putting any kind of money in anything else. We're going to see if we can't get the engine running good. If we can't get the engine running good it's really there's really no sense in, in trying to fix everything else. So 
we're going to do that. So with that, I'm going to say Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye and take care.